Hey, it's Joe here. In this video, we're gonna build this plane from scratch. I'm gonna show you step by step of everything you need to do to get this plane from the raw materials to the finished product ready for you to fly. To begin, we're gonna peel the paper off of our eighth inch foam board. Now, first thing we're gonna do is cut out all the wing sections and fuselage sections and such forth. So here is the wing section being cut out. Um, we're going to have all the dimensions in the description. Uh, we're going to do the two wing sections going to be identical to each other, top and bottom. Uh, here we're doing the uh, fuselage now. It's going to make your measurements. Um, we're going to mark the points on either end and then mark the points at which they go to the edge and then we're going to use those to do the angles. Um, it's a pretty geometric shape. Um, you can round it off if you want. Um, it's however you want to do it. This part's not too critical as long as your length is going to be about the same. Um, so just use your first one as a template to cut out the second one. Now here's going to be the, your, uh, the top and bottom to the fuselage. So use about the same type of taper. Have it narrow in the front and narrow towards, towards the re rear. Keep in mind that the teardrop shape is the most aerodynamic shape. So just use one as a template for the other. Now, when you glue it together, um, just glue both of the top and bottom to one side of the fuselage, and then you're going to just glue it all on there. Make sure that they're, all the pieces are uh, perpendicular to the fuselage, and then once you get those done, you're going to glue the other side to the, um, to the top and bottom, as you can see here. Uh, you can use a knife to, um, to trim it off. Now, remember that the... Uh, that the top and bottom are going to be a little bit shorter. You want there to be a little bit of a gap as you can see there. Um, also make sure that you shave everything down so it's flat on the front so that way when you mount the motor um, it's going to be flat. Now use your, uh, we're going to make a little horizontal stab for your horizontal stabilizer and then you're going to use that as a template, cut out a slot in the tail section and whenever you do do that make sure that it is perpendicular to the rest of the fuselage. And of course, the same thing with your tail. Uh, there's nothing too fancy for your vertical stabilizer, you know, for your rudder. And then, of course, uh, you're also gonna need to cut out your ailerons out of the wings. Um, keep about three quarter to an inch from the edge of the wing. You wanna give a little bit of meat there, so if you do hit from the side, it won't tear your ailerons off. And on your ailerons, you're gonna wanna cut off about an eighth of an inch off of each one, so that way there's a little bit of room there for movement, so you don't have any bonding. Now, for the uh, for all of your hinge points, we're going to use, um, there's a variety of materials here. I just happen to be using the, um, it's a fiberglass uh, tab. There's other ones out there, those plastic ones. It's really anything that you want to use. Uh, just cut a slot into the foam with an X-Acto knife and then put in the pieces. Uh, you usually want at least three per control surface. Uh, just add a little glue, and whenever you do glue them together, you want to make sure that you work it so that way the glue does not cool or dry in a way that's going to inhibit their their movement. So, so as it so if you're using hot glue, just make sure you wiggle them around um, as it cools. Now these are going to be your uh, your elevators here. We're just going to cut these out. Here I'm having them where they protrude a little bit past the uh, the stabs, so um, that gives a little bit you know more of a a little bit more performance for their size. Um, kind of makes it almost like a flying tail, but not quite. Uh, so you just do that. You could do it where it was all one piece. I just happen to be using two of them. Um, later, I'll show you how I'll, I'll synchronize them together. And for your ailerons, um, I'm using, I believe, four tabs uh, for each one. So you can kind of insert the tabs partially in there, apply the glue so you're not fighting it too much when you push them in place. And of course, once again, make sure that you move them around as the, as the glue dries. You can, of course, use um, other types of glue, such as uh, Gorilla Glue, the white con. I highly recommend that. Um, for the purpose of this video, uh, it's faster to use hot glue, of course. Hot glue does work fine, but gr the gorilla, gorilla Glue works best. Uh, of course, it does take more time to dry and takes a little more time to do, but it does make a better bond. Um, I'm just using one third inch carbon fiber rod. I'm sorry, not one third inch. I'm using one millimeter by three millimeter carbon rod um, to do all your edges to help 
give some stability and rigid, rigidity to the to the wing sections here I'm using balsa wood to uh, go across the top you know it's nothing specific I could have used the same carbon rod uh, or carbon um, strips to do that you could use anything that you feel is light enough and strong enough to do the job just add a little bit of uh, strength to the wing here I'm taking the eighth inch uh, uh, birch plywood I use plywood for the motor mounts because plywood isn't going to uh, to split it doesn't since it is plywood it's not going to have the, the grain issues um, I w am using Gorilla Glue for this because the motor mount needs to be strong make sure that if you use wood that you wet the wood prior to use it to apply prior to applying the glue I use a method of using masking tape to hold it in place because the masking tape can be easily peeled off once it dries now when you glue the fuselage to the wing sections you want to make sure that you have all that you have it right in line make sure that you use a square to square it off and that it's perpendicular to the fuselage and you want to do the same thing to the, to the top wing section um, I'm not offsetting these the uh, the two wings they're um, they're right above each other now you're also going to want to use um, however high your fuselage is you want to make sure that you make the um, the supports for the edges of the wings the same height as your fuselage uh, I'm putting them out pretty close to the edge uh, really right there with the ailerons in you can use hot glue gorilla glue whatever you want to use just glue them on there you could um, make them where there's not as much surface area but because of I like the performance that it gives if you're looking for something that's more of a casual flyer you can make it where uh, you don't have as much surface area for the edges now to do the synchronization of the two ailerons I am using a piece of a, about a one inch long piece of carbon fiber tubing you could use aluminum tubing brass tubing and or whatever you feel that you need to use um, whatever you have on hand it doesn't really matter I use a piece of the paper that I peeled off of the uh, foam board to help reinforce those pieces now when you glue them on there you want to make sure that they are um, that the edges are in line with each other so when you do the uh, the synchronization wire between the two that it's going to be vertical you don't want it at an angle so I have the two offset where the end of one is at the beginning of the other so whenever I put the, uh, the piano wire, music wire in place that it's perfectly straight. And you want to make sure that you do test it to make sure that it is going to be strong enough. Um, and for your motor mount, you're just going to use a drill, drill the holes out, and apply the screws. I usually start off with one screw and then use that to hold it in place to, to drill the other hole. For the sides, we're going to take some basswood and we're going to taper off the edges, cut them the same length, and then once the motor secured you can use those you can now use it as a guide to apply those supports and of course once you have those in place use a drill drill the holes apply the screws so that way your motor supported in all four uh, corners now for your control surfaces I use a piece of the paper about a three-quarter inch square and glue that on to where I'm putting in the control horn because the control horns I found works a lot better if you have a little paper backing because the paper is a better surface to glue on and helps um, uh, I guess spread out the load across the foam since the paper is a little stronger than the than the foam same thing with the other side just glue a piece of paper down make a hole and insert the horn um, it doesn't really matter exactly where it is you just want to make sure that the two are identical so whatever spacing you have from the hinge point you want to make sure that it is the same and now what I do my little method for the servos is to put a little wire take a piece of music wire um, I think this is a uh, either uh, 040 or 036 um, whatever you feel comfortable with using um, just make a little U shape um, about a couple inches long and then make sure that your uh, servo horn is perpendicular to, and that you're uh, to their to your wing and then make it sure it's in line and that way that does your spacing too so you want to make sure that you get that pretty well right so that way you're not making a lot of corrections in the radio um, 
this is your carbon fiber rod. I believe this is a 1.5 millimeter. It could be basswood, balsa, or whatever you want to do to tie the two elevators together. It's not necessary per se, but I like to use a little bit of paper to help reinforce that. I find that works a lot better. Make sure that that rod does not come loose. And here I'm checking to make sure that there is uh, sufficient clearance between the rudder and the elevator so they're not um, there's no interference with each other so once again using the paper applying it to the control surface making a hole in each one applying some uh, good bead of hot glue inserting the horn and you can also use a uh, pair of uh, end snips to snip off the excess so that way you don't have that hanging out and once again using a pair of pliers making a u-shape I'm making the U a little bit bigger on the horns. You know, you just make it to the size. You don't want a whole lot of slop because that's going to, if you have a lot of slop, that's going to um, show up in your control surfaces. So I don't usually make the, the U perfect. I find it kind of an angle. It kind of holds it to the horn a little better. Now, I just uh, using the wire, connecting it to the servo first, and using that to mark the place where I'm going to make the hole, gluing it so that way that makes your adjustment for between your servo and the uh, and the control surface. Like I said, make sure that your servo is perpendicular to your control surface when you glue it in place so that way you're not having to make a lot of correction in your radio. And once again, connecting it up, uh, putting it where it needs to be, cutting the hole out. Now for the elevator, I'm punching a hole out to the other side to run the control uh, wire to the other side because I'm mounting the um, and mounting the receiver on that side so you know make sure that you do use sufficient amount of hot glue uh, whenever you do mount the servos and I'm making little u-shaped uh, little brackets to help su support that control rod so that way it's not flexing and just do it you know halfway between the servo and the control surface I'm just cutting a little hole out I'm using a fly sky receiver of course you can use any type of receiver you want this particular receiver the way that it works I found that um, it's best just to since because of the physical shape of it I can pull a hole on the other side to uh, I'm using the hole on the other side to put a pair of pliers in place that way I can help push the um, the receiver to the side of the plane because I'm gluing it on the inside of the plane and then I'm also adding a little bit of glue being careful not to get it on the connections themselves to help reinforce that receiver well in place so that way when I push in the control uh, the servo uh, leads it, it doesn't push through and when you mount your ESC I'm mounting the ESC on the bottom I like having the ESC exposed to the air so it can stay cool um, this ESC is probably a little overkill and also when you do mount the ESC make sure that the that the main heat sink is facing away from the plane um, you can use uh, tape or whatever you want to use or even hot glue to glue your um, your wires down so they're not flopping around. Um, this is the point where you're checking your center gravity to know where you mount your battery. Um, you want the center gravity to be pretty far forward between uh, one third to one quarter to the front of the wing. And once you put your, once you uh, just move the battery back and forth until you get to the where you want the battery to be. And then you make a little battery box. I'm just cutting the foam out, um, making little pieces, and just boxing in the interior of the plane so it holds that battery nice and secure. And the way that we're going to actually hold the battery um, in is we use a, using a piece of Velcro. Uh, once I make the box, I'm going to cut little slits, as you'll see in a moment, where we're going to run the Velcro uh, strapping around to help well to hold the, the battery into place so it's not really that difficult as me a fair amount of little pieces but I'm also using a little piece of strips of uh, carbon fiber you could use basswood or balsa wood so that way the um, it helps reinforce the foam so when you put the the velcro through it doesn't tear the foam so well here's here's the point where we, we cut the strap out it can be a little a little frustrating to um, to run the velcro through but um, I just use a little rod to push uh, through so that way I know where to cut the slots out on the other side and then just cut the slots out you know make sure that they're you know just a little bit bigger so you can run your velcro through without fighting it too much you're just gonna run it to the other side and then give yourself a few inches of um, overlap and this will allow you to change your battery out pretty easily at this point 
you know, you want to make sure that you check your radio, check all, make sure all the controls are good. You put all the screws in the servo horn so they don't fall out. And you could at this point fly the plane, see how you like it, see if there's anything major that you need to fix. Uh, one thing that I noticed whenever I did that was the wings definitely need to be reinforced. So best way to reinforce wings is to use carbon rod. Of course, you could use balsa or anything else, but carbon rods um, getting pretty inexpensive anymore, and it doesn't have a lot of drag, and it's pretty strong. So you just kind of punch holes through your planes, um, do 45-degree um, angles, and just apply a little hot glue to either side as you push it through. Also, like to, to make little pieces of paper and to glue um, on the on the ends, glue paper so that way it helps reinforce the rod and that way you don't see the, um, it's not as obvious that you have the uh, the rod just sitting there, but it does mostly for strength. Now for your landing gear, you want to make sure that you uh, give yourself a little bit of room um, for your prop so that way if you do come in a little bit of an angle, your prop doesn't hit the pavement. So, And you can take paper and you could help hide some of the wires. Um, I'm just hiding the wires going to the uh, to the ESC. You could do it to the side of the plane if you wanted to. I'm not really too worried about it, so I didn't do a whole lot more. I'm taking a piece of uh, brass uh, tubing and I'm making it the, the, the width of the uh, of the fuselage, the length of the fuselage, well, the length of the of how tall the fuselage is, cutting it and inserting it in so that way it goes all the way through and is flush on both sides. So I'm just pushing that piece of brass tubing all the way through, and you want to make sure it comes up right there at the hinge point of your rudder. It's very important that you get it just right. So you glue it in place and make sure you got it right where you want it. Now you're going to take a piece of music wire, and you're going to do um, not quite a 90 degree angle because the rudder is not quite 90 degrees to that tubing. And then you want to give yourself about two to three inches excess. So when you slide through the tubing, it's going to come out to the other side. And this is where we're going to be. Of course, you want to glue it to your rudder. Uh, this is also a good reason to make sure that your rudder has is pretty strong because it will be supporting the, the tail, uh, the weight of the plane from the tail end. And once again, using paper to help reinforce the, the connection between that rod, um, the music wire, and the rudder. And supporting it, being careful to support it, you're going to, uh, to turn um, or bend that wire to 90 degrees. Put your tail wheel on and use a, a little shaft collar to lock your wheel into place. Now using some uh, 60 grit to 100 grit sandpaper, you're going to sand off all the edges, make sure they're nice and smooth before you paint. Take some masking tape and some maybe paper towels and help you know mask all the point parts you don't want uh, to be painted and then do some very, very light coats. Don't do it very heavy. I'm using a fusion paint. Fusion paint's uh, compatible with foam, but you don't want to do it too heavy because uh, if you do it too heavy, it will cause deterioration of the foam.